Hello and welcome to the Technical Reviewer Paper Trail tutorial for NACE International Conferences, Topical Shows, and Area Shows. Much of the content that will be discussed is directed towards technical paper reviewers affiliated with the annual Corrosion Conference, but some aspects may also be relevant to the topical and area shows offered by NACE. If you have specific questions, it is best to reach out to your staff contact that has been communicating with you regarding deadlines and requirements related to your reviewer responsibilities. This brief tutorial will demonstrate how to access the paper trail system within the NACE website. We will show you how to access the resource tab in paper trail, which contains many helpful documents to assist you in the review process. We will show you where to access abstract descriptions should you need to review them. And we'll also show you how to access the draft papers and final papers so you'll be able to enter comments for authors, understand what you need to look for in their paper, and be able to address any questions or concerns that they might have in the process of submitting their draft and final papers. Lastly, we'll show you how to contact NACE staff and your symposium officers should you have any questions or concerns. NACE staff members in the Technical Activities Department and Conference Department at NACE should be able to assist you with your inquiry. Again, as I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, some of the items discussed in this tutorial may not be relevant for your particular show as the requirements for topical and area shows may vary. This tutorial provides a comprehensive overview of the entire paper trail system, so keep that in mind as we go through the presentation. This video is going to be somewhat informal as I'm going to walk you through the system step by step rather than using screenshots so you can see how the system actually functions using a web browser and the internet. So let's go ahead and get started. You'll first want to open up a web browser and type in www.nace.org to access the NACE homepage. Then in the top right corner, you'll want to go ahead and click the blue button that says Login. Here, you'll need to enter your username and password that's in the NACE database. As a technical reviewer, you're already a NACE member, so you do have a username and password that should be available to use. If you don't know your username and password, please use the Forgot Your Username or Password link or please call a First Service representative at one of the numbers listed below. Please note, do not create a new username and login because you're already in the database. This will create a duplicate record which can be problematic later on when trying to locate your information. For the purpose of this tutorial, I am going to log in as my colleague Leslie Martinez who is assigned as a reviewer for this mock symposium. So once you enter your username and password, and I will mention that the password is case sensitive, so keep that in mind if you have issues logging in. And you're going to be directed to the My Account page. So this is what the My Account page looks like. Should you navigate somewhere off the site at any time and you need to get back here, you can access My Account by clicking in the top right corner. So we're on the My Account page, and this column or this toolbar on the left uh, will list Paper Trail. You want to go ahead and click Paper Trail. And then you're going to have at least one box, perhaps two. Uh, the one that you will have is the Paper Trail Reviewer Portal, and that's what you'll want to use to access the papers that you need to review for the symposium session. But you may also have a box that says Paper Trail Author Portal. That's the portal that you'll want to use if you are an author affiliated with any NACE event, or perhaps you were affiliated with a NACE event in the past. Um, that's how you would access those papers as an author. But for a reviewer for a technical symposia, you'll want to go ahead and make sure that you click on the reviewer portal. All right, so this takes you to the associated events page. So this will list any of the events that you've ever been affiliated with, uh, with NACE. Uh, so you'll notice from a drop down menu here, you'll want to make sure that you've selected the right event to review those papers. Uh, for our example, we're going to use Corrosion 2017. Uh, if you were to click on a different event, for example, Latin Core 2016, uh, in, in Leslie's example. Um, if you were looking for yourself listed as a reviewer uh, and your event is listed as Latin Core, 
you're going to be unsuccessful in finding it because the symposia are broken out by events. So make sure you're selected on the right event. Here you'll see Leslie's listed as a reviewer. Uh, so we'll go ahead and click there. One thing I want to point out uh, to you as a reviewer is you're going to want to pay attention to the draft due date and the final due date. Most likely you've received this information prior to logging into the system from a NACE staff member. Um, but in case you haven't, make sure you mark these down on your calendar because you'll need to plan your time accordingly to make sure that you can review the draft paper and the final paper. And, and those dates, um, you know, obviously from year to year are updated. So, so make sure you you log in and uh, check those dates. So go ahead and click on this symposium you're marked as a reviewer for. And this is going to take you to the general tab. So here you're going to go ahead and see the name of the event, the name of the symposium, and then you'll see who's listed as the chair and vice chair and staff liaison. And then you'll see your name listed as a reviewer. Uh, should you need to contact the, the chair or vice chair or the staff liaison, you can just click on their name and a new tab or a new window is going to pop up. And in their NACE member profile, they opted in to have uh, some level of information. Some people will have a description here, such as myself. Um, I, I describe my roles and responsibilities here at NACE. Um, some chairs and vice chairs may list their, their current job functions or their areas of expertise. Um, but then you'll also see a listing for uh, contact information. So here you can see my email address which is listed um, if you, should you need anything um, you know as staff liaison of the corrosion conference uh, I can be contacted or you can click send a message here to contact the staff liaison. The same goes for the chair and vice chair roles as well. So now if you go ahead and click on the abstracts tab uh, you'll go ahead and see here that these are the abstracts that were accepted into the symposia. If you, for any reason, wanted to review them, you can click on it and you'll see who the presenting author is, their first name and last name, uh, their parent company, their email address, their phone number. Uh, you should refrain from contacting the presenting author. Uh, communication should just be maintained in the, the paper trail portal. Uh, if you're finding that they're non-responsive, please contact the NACE staff liaison or your symposium chair or vice chair to let them know that they haven't um, responded to your feedback. Um, but here you'll see the, the title listed uh, of their paper, and then there'll be a brief description uh, submitted as the abstract. And it's usually a maximum of 10,000 characters, which is about 300 to 400 words. Uh, the content is technically and scientifically accurate. Um, and the, uh, the, the paper may, or the abstract submission may have received comments from the chair, which may be written here. Uh, accepted abstracts are not required to have comments, so there may be some that are blank, um, but it may be beneficial to see which papers you're assigned to, see if the chair had any specific feedback. Which brings me to my next point. How do you know which paper you're assigned to? Uh, as a reviewer, you're gonna log in and you'll see a whole list of papers um, in the draft column and also eventually into the the final paper column that you'll need to review. So how do you go ahead and figure out which one you're assigned to? Uh, most likely the chair or vice chair's contacted you in advance to let you know which papers they need you to review. Um, but you'll also see here there is a reviewer tab. So you'll know uh, in this example Leslie uh, who were, were logged into her account She's only assigned to review one paper right now. It lists who the reviewer is. So um, just make sure that you're reading across so you can see which ones you're assigned to so you don't accidentally review one, uh, an extra one that you don't need to. Uh, so we'll go ahead and click on this one. And you will see here um, that there, there may be, in some instances, multiple versions. So um, for the purpose of this tutorial, I already had entered some feedback. So you'll see the first draft, it'll be submitted, it'll be a Word document. The draft stage is always a Word document. Uh, you'll see the date and time it was submitted on. And then I entered just uh, some comments here, mentioned that the feedback would go here. 
Um, but please note that if you include any special characters, so whether that be a forward slash or a backward slash or brackets um, or a, gress, a less than or a greater than sign, you're going to have difficulty entering that feedback into the text box. So um, you'll see with the second column here, um, you can view the revised paper and then you can enter in the comments. And then um, if you had to have more extensive comments that may have uh, special characters such as the one seen here in this Word document. You'll want to incorporate those into a Word document and save it and then you can upload that Word document here to the um, to the site. You'll want to go ahead and select your comments and it has to be a Word document and then you can mark the action either as approved um, or returned for revisions and then hit apply action. And this, I want to also mention that at the draft stage, uh, you'll notice that it had said this was the second version. Um, there could be the potential for a third version. The system only supports three revisions at each stage. So if there are additional revisions, please contact NACE staff. Uh, you may need to manage that outside of the system. But um, th those are only in special circumstances, and NACE staff should be aware of that taking place that it's been more than three revisions um, but in most instances you only have two or three revisions during the draft stage so once you have marked your draft papers that you were assigned to as approved the next step would be for them to submit their final paper and remember we can we can figure that out by uh, the, on that previous page where it had listed on the event list the deadlines where you can see so the final paper deadline you'll want to make sure you log back in soon after that to review their their final papers and for this particular instance um, Leslie's not listed as a reviewer but it, it's the same similar concept that you would have had um, in the, the draft stage. So you can you can list the comments. The final paper will always be a PDF. Um, so the PDF is here for your download. And again, you can see the date and the time that it was, it was added. Um, you can provide that feedback and apply the action. Um, it's highly unlikely that you would ever withdraw or reject a paper at this stage. Uh, if anything, it would either be approved or returned for revisions. If you have questions or if an uh, author disagrees with your feedback and you, you need someone to provide an alternative opinion, uh, please reach out to your chair and vice chair to see if they can step in to, to assist you. Um, but so here again, you'd leave the comments. Um, if this paper was assigned to Leslie, it would have that browser button again. If you needed to leave more lengthy comments and details, you could do so and then hit apply action. So the one last thing I want to draw your attention to uh, is, uh, well, there's two things, actually. Uh, if you were having a difficult time locating your paper that you were assigned to be a reviewer, you could go ahead and click on this Reports tab, and then you could click on the Abstract Status Report, and you would see the list of the abstracts that you are assigned to review. Um, so that's two locations that you can find the abstract reviewer process or, or who should be assigned to review those abstracts in the process. Um, the, the last thing I want to show you is the resource tab. So the resource tab is something that you should become familiar with. Um, in particular, there's, there's the main document or there, there's really two main documents that you want to be familiar with and that is the uh, technical program manual. This is for Corrosion Conference area and topical shows. Uh, if there's reviewers that are watching this tutorial right now, um, you won't necessarily have a technical program manual. Those requirements vary by show, so reach out to your staff liaison to, to find out what those requirements may be. But this PDF is extremely important for technical reviewers for the Corrosion Conference as it outlines the important deadlines uh, that you'll want to pay attention to. 
and it goes through the entire process and tells you how to to contact symposium chairs and vice chairs talks about the various responsibilities it has my contact information as the the staff member for corrosion um, and it goes through the the entire process um, and then we also have a checklist for papers uh, while this is provided to the authors um, this is also extremely beneficial for you as a reviewer to use the checklist um, to find out more details of the process and then this will be important to you as well the the style guidelines for the paper in the symposia uh, if you happen to watch part one of the reviewer tutorial on the site uh, or on on YouTube depending on how you access this recording um, we you will know that we have streamlined the requirements for the symposium papers we've relaxed it slightly and um, while the primary focus of reviewers is to review for technical and scientific accuracy we do ask that you also be aware of issues of commercialism that may exist um, specifically with trade names um, we have on page 9 here or page 10 rather of this document um, we have a definition of the trade name what, what is a trade name and what you should be looking for um, if there's any issues in a paper that seems to be promoting or advertising a company a product or a service uh, that would be a direct violation of the technical program manual and uh, it should be returned for the paper should be returned for revisions and you should ask the author to make those edits uh, prior to approving that paper uh, for the names of um, for specific uh, materials or, or trade names we do provide you with a list of the UNS numbers that should be referenced that document for the UNS numbers can also be found in the resource tab under NACE tables with common metal names they should be citing that uh, in their papers so please make sure that you also uh, open up this document as well so you can reference it as you go through the the paper review process if you find that they're not using the UNS number and they're using the actual name uh, please make sure you refer them to this document in your comment section Sorry about that. Uh, so just to finish up with the uh, technical program manual, um, we do give the authors guidance on content and formatting um, and how to appropriately cite the papers. Um, we talk about the draft review process and the final review process and how their files should be prepared. Uh, I mentioned it earlier in the tutorial but the draft paper stage will always be a word document the final paper stage will always be a PDF and we again go through the commercialism um, and style guidelines for the author's presentations um, this document is important for you to read because authors have acknowledged and, and signed off on that they have read it and agree to comply with the uh, the requirements or specifications that are contained in this document so as a reviewer going through the the papers uh, it would be beneficial for you to familiarize yourself with these requirements as well um, for those that are listening to this tutorial that are affiliated with the corrosion conference uh, starting with corrosion 2017 uh, you may have heard in the first in part one of the tutorial uh, that NACE staff is no longer reviewing the papers they're no longer involved in the review process uh, it's strictly going to be uh, the technical reviewers and if it comes to any uh, grammatical errors or sentence structure that needs to be changed to the paper that is the responsibility of the author um, that is not the responsibility of the reviewer to to make those changes um, you're, you're free to do so or you're free to mention to them that they might want to have a 
uh, an additional or additional person or a colleague review their paper for for grammar, um, but it is not your responsibility as a reviewer to um, to make any edits or changes based on on grammar or sentence structure or anything of that nature. Uh, your primary responsibility is to be reviewing for scientific accuracy and technical accuracy with the content and to ensure that they followed the technical program manual. Um, they were all provided a Word document template that contains the proper margins and fonts and size and spacing and illustrates to them how their paper should be set up. There's also a sample paper available in the resources tab of Paper Trail. So that's something that they can go ahead and reference as well. So um, make sure that you download this document as, as soon as you log into Paper Trail, uh, as it will be extremely beneficial for you throughout the process. But once you've reviewed that draft paper and the final paper, um, that actually concludes the process. And you know, on, on behalf of NACE, I just want to thank each and every one of you. Um, it's, it, it, we could not have a successful conference uh, or topical or area show if it wasn't for the hard work and dedication of individuals like you. Um, you know, we, we appreciate that you, or we understand that you all have very busy schedules and we appreciate that you make NACE a priority and you take time out and, and, and contribute to ensuring that we have a successful show. Um, we just ask that, you know, as always, that you be mindful of deadlines. And if you have any questions or are unsure about something, uh, please feel free to contact NACE staff. Uh, we're here to help you. Um, we're here to clarify anything that you might not be familiar with. Um, if it's technical content, you'll probably want to go ahead and refer to your symposium chairs and vice chairs as they would be considered subject matter experts. Um, NACE staff would be able to help you with, with questions about deadlines and potential formatting or commercialism issues. Um, so, so please feel free to reach out to any of us if you have any questions or concerns. And uh, uh, we look forward to working with you in the future. So thank you for your time and, and thank you for your dedication and have a great day. Goodbye.